Uh, so this is the uh, September 12th, 2022 meeting of the Zoning Bylaw Committee. Uh, roll call of who's here, starting with Clark. Clark River is here. Tom Callahan is here. David Farag is here. David and Lauren and Cassandra are with us. You almost outnumber us. <laughs> almost. Almost. <laughs> David is officially with us because he handed in his resignation to the Board of Registrars today. Thank you for doing that. David. Yes. I'm Way sure to go. Was, I'm sure that was a monumental sacrifice. Yes. You, are, waited, are you, till, you that, waited till after the primary. I hope you got to do your thing at the primary. No, not, not much excitement there, no. <laughs> Zoning bylaws is where it's at. You're on the wrong Zoning, team. Zoning is very exciting. <laughs> David, you're on the wrong team. That's why. But I, that's all I'll say about the subject. Just in the wrong state. That's all. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. All right. Let's get to our agenda, which I had printed, but then, of course, left in my office. So it's here somewhere. Oh, where did I put it? First is discussion and adoption of work and meeting schedule. Yeah. So uh, you, you guys got all circulated the meeting and forum schedule going into this at least through the winter and uh, lauren worked at, lauren and cassandra both worked on this as well we moved around dates to accommodate everything um the news the one change in the schedule is originally circulated is that this committee's next meeting which was originally going to be thursday the 29th will be monday the 3rd of october that'll give KP another couple of days for their diagnostic and I will be on an airplane so I wouldn't been able to be there so um, we're going to move that to Monday the third um, the forums let's see where is that document do we have a single document that shows all the forums is this the proposed forum content for September yeah well November? let me yeah, oh, so, yes, yeah, yeah. so the, the, you see the forum the forum and the uh, meeting schedule so we will be meeting twice a month um, and then hopefully by it's by the end of this month that they will have did we lose tom uh, tom tom you're freezing oh, shit. it happened the last time on monday night but it doesn't happen on wednesday can, hey, can you tom, when me? was the last time you um you got your gear changed from from Xfinity. My who? Your gear, your Xfinity gear. Well, it's, it's a good question, Clark. I have to talk to them anyway. I'm trying, I'm thinking I'm way overpaying for what I'm getting. You, you are, but um, I, I when <laughs> Zoom started, I, I had a lot of trouble with the bang, 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 and freezing and stuff like that. Wow. And uh, they just swapped out all my junk that all right. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm going to, it reminds me that I have to call them anyway in the future. So, all yeah, right. It can't hurt if it's been sitting there for 12 years and, you know. Oh, yeah. No, yeah. My stuff, my stuff in the house is really old stuff. So, getting, yeah, get new. It doesn't cost anything. You're paying for it. So, right. now you feel better about your bill every month. Yeah. And I'm not so sure I need all the channels that I need that I have since I'm not here very much. But anyway, be that as it may, if you can't hear me, just let me know. But, all right, and so for the forums, the first one is going to be in October. It's now going to be the 17th, right, Lauren, not the 30th? Yes, yeah, right. Okay. And the first one is going to be the harbor and the village are going to be the topics. And um, that's going to be a discussion of things that have been batted around by the working group prior to this. We will have the diagnostic by then, so there might be some new material to bring in. Uh, Lauren, Chris Sr., and Justin Schreer, is it? Right. Our new communications guy. We, we had a little meeting about it the other day. Um, it will be conducted in the, um, all of these forums are going to be conducted in the big room at the senior center, but they're going to be simultaneously uh, on Zoom and on Facebook. And um, so the first one is that the second one is going to be the housing topic. And then we, we discussed this on the planning board the other night. Clark, you're going to be up for the third one in early December because we're going to start talking about environmental issues. And uh, for those of you 
don't know since the first time we met, Clark has <clears throat> sort of volunteered, <laughs> been, been recruited slash volunteered to take on issues of green development, low impact development, and uh, for the moment, climate resiliency and climate right. change. Sustainability. But, Sustainability. But those but I, do I do have something to add, I think to the third one, I, I was wondering if environmental resilience that's good, but it's the thing that's missing is like Cohasset's future. Like, and it seems like it could go into the, the environmental and resilience approach. It has something to do with Cohasset's future. And, and there are a number of sort of, I think, philosophical things to tackle as a part of that. All right, well, let me, <laughs> let me say this about that. We yeah. had until December 5th, you are the lead point guy now on that one. So gather what materials and data that you'd like to gather. We are shooting for these forms to be roughly an hour and a half in length. They are going to have a third party facilitator to, uh, to, to uh, conduct the Q&A session on recognizing people. And in that hour and a half, it's probably half presentation, half questions and answers. So. Um, right now, those are the broad topics, and Clark, I'll look forward to you refining that as you'd like. Um, if you see that what Lauren has put for proposed speakers, um, you, you're, you're there with your low impact development, you can expand that to other green zoning bylaw type things. And, and as far as climate resiliency, uh, again, you and I've talked about this, you know, bring in who you'd like from other committees uh, to help you with this. Uh, there is a model bylaw to look at. Um, and we'll, we'll just broaden your, we'll broaden your uh, bailiwick for that one to, to include the climate change and resiliency and sustainability. So Tom and Clark on this one, the um, Cost of Harbor Committee, George Baumgarten and Lisa Hewitt Dick had organized that. They were the ones who were the point people who organize the climate resiliency forum. So they may be, or even like, you know, Amy's husband, Tom was one of the speakers at one of those things. If that's what you're thinking, I think that'd be a good person. I think the thing that I just want to remind us is that we could get, a lot of these topics could be like slippery slopes into a lot of policy content and discussion. Mm -hmm. We are the zoning bylaw committee and we have to like really keep it to how do we address this through zoning and how is this a zoning lens? Yeah. You know what I mean? Okay. And then um, our fourth forum, I guess got, originally there might've been four, but I guess we will, the fourth is gonna come after the new year. Um, the, you know, at the series. Yeah, <clears throat> at the beginning of the new year, or certainly late in this year, um, we're also gonna be focused on our spring 23 warrant articles. And we really probably have to have those in shape, I would guess, by early February. Mm -hmm. You know, and there's some draft articles out there, and then we'll have council's input on some of that. If you recall, we're going to focus on mostly the reorganization in the spring with perhaps some substantive low-hanging fruit. And then the major subjects and stuff will be um, next fall. Um, so uh, that's that's the schedule. Is everybody good with that schedule? Um, yeah, I just had a couple quick things, um, and and this could end up bumping into the the, the fourth one that comes. Uh, but one of the things that we want to probably get in there is about single family home development. Um, that's a you know a major one that everyone that the bylaw is probably going to be looking at in some way, shape, or form, uh, whether it's to change the regs or whatever. So. Uh, to get that on the table. And as far as uh, commercial development um, or, or even, um, you know, the, the, our business districts, you know, like 3A, North Cohasset, Beachwood, um, it could go all under maybe development, you know, and cover residential and commercial or, or something like that. Um, but those would be two things that would have to be covered, I think, because of if there's any rework of the bylaw from what I've seen so far, it's going to, it's going to hit those topics. And within the ones that we currently have for the themes, one of the things, like even when we talk about the Harbor, uh, another topic would, with all of them is probably mitigation. Uh, mitigation has to be something that 
is added probably under every thing if if it's mm -hmm. you know if it's appropriate if it's not um and i and i those are the only ones that i was i was thinking of that uh might have been left in a gap david i i i have notes um that that follow those exact uh thoughts exactly um and i i think uh, how we deal with growth has to do with what the future of cohasset looks like and residential uses versus non-residential uses and <clears throat> just exactly what kind of development or growth do we want to encourage and what what kinds do we want to discourage or um uh, and also the the mitigation of fees cost sharing i think the private way um um example is a is is a, a salient one for uh, just how you you can get people that are making a profit off of development to um to kind of pay their share for infrastructure improvements that are needed uh whether at the locus or or elsewhere but i th i think cost impact fees mitigation are is is worth a, as well as what is as of right what could you pull a pullability permit for and what what do you have to go through um permitting boards for um talking about that because i think that's what what a lot of homeowners are wondering can i build a a, a living room addition or a garage or whatever it is that they want to do in the development community as well um yeah. I, and, and I'm still hoping to interview the other planning board members and maybe some of the ZBA members, the building inspector, for uh, what they think works well, what doesn't work well, and, and what would they like to see that doesn't exist that they're familiar with in the zoning bylaws. Yeah, yeah I think with, with what's there is if we, from what has already been done with the themes, th those are great, and that if we flush those out, as, as we go through the process, because remember, we're going to get back uh, in the beginning there uh, what KP had done. Uh, and so uh, it would probably be maybe the fourth one, but but definitely th those topics that I talked about and then, you know, go from go from there, however we want to package those uh, cool. and then and then go from there. But it looks it, it looks good. And I think the, uh, the the first one with the harbor and the village, I mean, that's that's one that's front and center. Uh, and the last thing I was going to say on it is that um, with some of these, if we could definitely invite some of the other uh, boards, um, if they if they wanted to come, you know, the you know zoning planning, uh, and definitely when it gets to the one on um, the environment, uh, you know, like the the alternative energy committee, uh, just make sure it's open, you know, that anybody can come. And if they need to post because their whole committee is going to be there, then so be it. Yeah. I just so you so the first four with the harbor in the village is necessarily going to bring us into a discussion and i think it's one of the bullet points of, of linkage mm -hmm. um, and we do have to clarify some things of what a, a suburban town can do and not do you know a big city like boston does linkage but i'm not so sure suburbs don't do it and i'm not sure how much we can get away with Boston has a completely separate zoning code than the rest of the state. So they, they have a lot of different tools that we might not have. But um, we're also going to discuss parking at that one. And then the second forum and the housing, we are inviting, we are intending to invite the housing committee to co-host that. And while that might get into discussion of single family homes, it's definite, you can see its focus is on multifamily. Um, and, the, and the accessory dwelling by law. The, the thing about the single family homes is, um, you know, first of all, that the targeted changes to the bylaw for that would would probably not come until fall of next year. So that's one reason okay. the forum goes into next year. But um, the, the working group talked about some of these issues like the, the table of area regulations is where these changes would physically come in the bylaw and we danced around a bunch of things but we never came to a consensus and i think before we host a forum on that we need to have a little bit more of a consensus of this committee about what directions we'd like to talk about and, and perhaps go in uh, because the purpose of the forum will be to bounce around the ideas. And I just want to make sure this committee is 
is focused on, on on what those ideas are. You know, at, at least understand some of the we, things we've talked about. In the past. We'd have to have the ideas. Um, yeah, well, there there are articulated and are, presented. Like you can yeah. have this or that. Uh, what do yeah, you think well, there, we, there are ideas. We just haven't discussed it. But speaking of the idea about going to the other boards, what popped into my head is that Lauren, maybe on the meeting on the third, if we're anticipating the diagnostic. It would probably be helpful if we invite ZBA and planning board to that meeting so that it can all be heard at the same time in one presentation. Uh, That's other, a good boards, idea. other boards like CONCOM, they don't specifically mm -hmm. deal with zoning. They can be invited, but they don't have to participate. But I think zoning and planning. So let's let's that, least shoot around. Sense. Yeah, shoot around a doodle poll thing and see who'd like to come, and then we can post the meetings appropriately for the other committees. Uh, I guess the select board as well, it's probably best that they hear this as well. well can do it all in one fell swoop. So uh, you could let uh, Judge Cutler and Carolyn know that would be the plan as well. Yeah. All right, Sandra so- Sandra and I will organize everyone. Hmm? Okay, Sandra and I will organize with everyone. Great, thank you. All right, so with uh, all that said, is this schedule uh, workable, doable for everybody? Trying, try, trying to find meeting nights when we are not meeting on other boards. Um, the 7th of November, the 17th of October, and the 5th of December. Those seem good. Okay. Yeah, the other thing I wanted to ask when you asked that question is I wanted to ask uh, Lauren, because I know she rejiggered this and, and had done this, if, if she thinks the schedule is, uh, you know, is appropriate and sort of in, in a good line to bring everything uh, to the to the uh, Springtown meeting. Yes, I do. I think uh, in this cadence, originally when we were talking about the level of forums, I had been, I had some concerns, but I do think that this cadence is appropriate. Yeah, and frankly, the, the, the fifth form or the second one in 2023 would probably be a pre-town meet. I, I would recommend a pre-town med meeting presentation to the community outside the planning board process and outside town meeting. And all the other boards that have to approve warrant articles is to do a forum on what we're gonna present the town meeting, you know, sometime March, April. You know, maybe maybe around the same time we're doing the planning board formal process and presenting to the other boards because not everybody attends those board meetings. So that's that's possibly an idea for the fifth forum or the sixth, depending on what else we do. But uh, that would be before the public hearings with the planning board. Probably, maybe, maybe I'm just thinking of the schedule. You know, you know, right now we we, we we've talked. To, the, the fourth forum will probably focus on the table of area regulations and what changes we might do relative to single family development. Whether there's a fifth topical forum, you know, perhaps if we get into what the single lot exemption, I don't know if that needs its own forum, but if we don't have an idea for a fifth topical forum, you know, in, in the late winter, early spring of 23, then I'm going to suggest, yes, we do a forum on what we're going to present to town meeting, which will be explaining the reorganization. And it may, depending on the timing, be at the same time we're doing the planning board hearing or presenting to the select board and the advisory committee. It just is going to depend on where we can fit it into our schedule. But I think it will be good to have a separate forum like that because you know as well as I do, very few people will uh, attend the planning board's hearing. Relatively few people will be listening to the selectmen and advisory committee meetings. Uh, so uh, I, I'm just throwing that out as an idea when we get to that point. But, uh, See, all is right. It, is it exhaustive outreach, uh, which I think is excellent, but as a part yeah. of the forum, I'm wondering, how do we capture uh, people's thoughts and reactions? Um, well, would we... I think just, Justin, just, Justin discussed that the other day, and I think he has a plan for, for doing that, right? Lauren, there is, there is a plan. And one of the things about, I'll be very honest, I didn't think a facil third party facilitator is needed and nobody's been selected yet. And it might be somebody outside the town, like from MAPC, but while they're, fielding, you know, picking who gets 
to ask the next question. And yes, some of us will have to answer questions. We, we can all be taking notes and stuff, but we're not all totally focused on running the meeting. We can all be taking notes, but Justin has all these modern tools and feedback things that he's got up his sleeve to get, make sure he has feedback. And, and he's, he's got a really wide publicity forum. So, um, you know, we're, we're, I'm told the senior Senate can hold well over a hundred people. So uh, we'll probably get a good turnout for this. And, uh, yeah. I mean, that's the thing is, is with, with the, <laughs> the, the turnout, you want to hear from, you know, the citizens, the, right. the town officials, development community, you, you know, you, you, you want to get it all. Uh, right. And then them. if you look at, if you look at our agendas, you know, our broad agendas for our meetings, we are going to lead off the next meeting after the forum with, uh, a discussion amongst ourselves of those results while well, you know all that feedback while well, it's fresh in our mind and then give ourselves directions uh, to go all right so uh, uh, last uh, last thing i have on this i'm sorry on the uh, one yep. that you have for housing and mbta with multi-family compliance and I, I know it was put in there as uh you know accessory dwelling bylaws one of the bullet points do you think on the one of the other bullet points we could put maybe you know something about 55 plus housing um because that is something in the in, in the in the master plan there about getting you know diversity of housing and things like that um and i, I know um, yeah yeah no just lauren make a note of that if you don't mind and, and it might be okay. might be something that would interest people as well uh, to talk about if, if they want to talk about it right i you know i i just i don't know if you noticed this day but in the in the development world i don't see 55 and over projects anymore i think they've fallen out of yeah of, what, what was it? They were they were very popular fifteen or twenty years ago. Yeah, they have um, fallen in, out of fashion. In, in terms of uh, not burdening schools and things like that, yeah. but um, the the units were very hard to uptake into the um, uh, so they were very slow. Uh, uh, so developers were asking for waivers and, and things like that. Um, yeah, but the, and the I, concept I think of that, housing diversity certainly is salient. Yeah, I think there was also some adverse court rulings on age restrictions, and right. that's that's one of the reasons it's lost. But we certainly bring that up, and that, but the, you know, the focus of that second one will be multifamily and, and, and how we deal with that issue that the, the T is forcing upon us. But um, and with respect to the uh, accessory dwelling, you should know that Woody Chittick behind the scenes has been taking a look at that. He has already submitted suggestions. I think Laura and I passed those along about, um, uh, you know, the very simple changes, Clark, that we've discussed on the planning board that are needed. But I had also, Laura and I don't know if you got a chance to do this yet, but I asked to, to, to there's a new model ADU bylaw and there might be one town that's now adopted the model bylaw and I've asked Woody to take a look at that. So I expect uh, some input and participation from him at that second forum as well. I understand that Norwell just passed a new ADU uh, bylaw okay. and, All right, well, and, and they have a as of right version uh, of a accessory dwelling unit, which okay. is, is I'll, worth, I'll, worth considering. If yeah, I'll bring, I'll, bring that to, I'll bring that to Woody's attention. So, you know, it's a good thing that we have pe various people who volunteered to take point on some of these very narrow issues. And Woody also is taking our first crack at looking at some proposed language changes to the uh, uh, the uh, non-conforming uh, uses and lot section of the bylaws. So that's, that's a zoning board issue. So Woody's taking point on that so, as well. Something so, that's okay. related is, um... Uh, Airbnbs. Some, some some people have approached me saying they don't like the idea of Airbnbs in Cohasset. They don't want it. We should outlaw it. Some some communities have um, yeah. made it difficult or impossible to have Airbnbs. I don't think we have any any particular um, regulation on those uh, currently in, in Cohasset, or we have we certainly haven't kicked it around. Um, I I don't know how many. Uh, we have or whether they're seasonal or cyclical I, I, have any sense tom no i don't but i think in the in the draft of the table of uses the new table of uses which is slimmed down and simplified uh i think i made it a prohibited use because i believe it's a prohibited use now under our bylaw temporary um, like rental yeah i short-term rental you know, 
my 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 thinking in doing the table of uses was not to prohibit anything we already not to allow anything we currently prohibit to, as so as to not rock the boat but it's certainly worth a discussion i i don't know how people i've never gotten a real sense of how people in the town think about it and how many people actually do it well it, it, it's I, an I issue of it. i think it's a, a a relevant issue for housing diversity in terms of having some short-term rentals um but uh, you know, you know, we did in the harbor uh, project decision. Uh, I believe we had a condition where um, the, the short-term rentals weren't going to be allowed. Right, we did. Um, but I, I, I don't know of anything in the zoning bylaw that that limits um, short-term rental generally. Okay, so all right. We'll we'll put that in there too. Uh, I'm sure Lauren's getting all this right. <laughs> oh boy. Uh, all right. No, that, that form is going to be a good one, too, I think, because uh, I don't know that everybody in the town appreciates fully what the MBTA mandate is. And also that it's been the goal of the Affordable Housing Committee, as long as it's been formed, uh, you know, to try to create downsizing and starter home options in town. The question is, where does it go? Uh, so that should be an interesting one. So. All right, um, I guess we'll take a formal vote on whether this sure. to adopt this schedule with the change of the meeting of September 29 to October 3rd. Uh, yeah, yes, okay. uh, uh, if that's the motion uh, with the caveat that um, what we learned from the first forum uh, might um, um, precipitate changes to the second and third and, and then the second forum changes to the third in terms of uh, what we learn and how we learn it. Uh, yeah, perhaps. I mean, they're all discrete topics, but what it might dictate is that we have to figure in maybe a follow-up forum on, on a particular topic somewhere into the schedule. And, and you know, that's possible too. So, well, well, just that if we find things that work really well in terms of uh, the, the- Oh, you mean the, in the, the, in the, the manner of the itself? Yeah, yeah, that, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, I mean, yeah, we could, it, we'll certainly yeah. have that flexibility. We set these apart, I think, enough that we can have that kind of flexibility to change things on, you know, as we need to. So. Each, each form and data collection um, um, is, um, you know, helpful to inform the, the next, I think. Yep. Okay. So as, as I move that, all in favor? Well, somebody second. Sure, if that's a motion, I'll, I'll second that. All right, all in favor? Aye. Aye, aye. Tom Kelly and I. David Farag, aye. Okay. <clears throat> by the way, I heard from Paul Grady by text. He's in the car. I tried to. Oh, no, he's here. He's here. There he is. There he is. Good for him. What a trooper. I don't even know if Jack told him he was volunteered to this committee. But. All right, so the next issue, where is the agenda again? Okay. Do we have anybody else in the public um, out there? Lauren or, or Cassandra? No, okay. I don't see anybody. I don't, that'll change after our forums, I can assure you. All right, let me... Uh, let me skip to item four. So the, the, the next three items were all what I called reaffirmations because yeah. the working group in its two years of work uh, did come to some consensus about organizational issues. And um, I'm not sure that we should be here to reinvent the wheel, but I did want to just make sure that this newly constituted committee was on board with these ideas as we go forward. And number four is the concept of taking all the administrative application type of material out of the bylaw in, in the hopes of saving text and ending dupl duplication and moving them into regulations and as the state of the art on what uh, needs to be put in an application changes, it can be more quickly adapted to by a regulation that it can by as a bylaw. So I circulated what had been a draft article uh, for the reorganization. And let me let me share my screen. 
Is that the reorganization of step one, article ZBC one? Can I not, oh, who's screen share? Can I screen share? <laughs> you should be able to know. Oh, okay. All right, so this mm -hmm. one. So what would it, what what in this original draft of mine, or, or Article One would have been, would have been the moving of this stuff out, and this just shows you all the sections that are filled with rather duplicative application type material that would be moved out and into the regulation. So if you want, almost every section of the bylaws, certainly the new ones and the teens that were added later on, all had their own separate stated application procedures. So these are all the sections that would move out and into regulations and it shortens up the text quite a bit and ends a lot of duplication and potential conflict. And um, if there's anything that, you know, like time limits of when the boards need to act on a particular application, that's really bylaw material and that needs to stay in bylaw material because a lot of that's dictated by state law. This is truly application and appeal type stuff, you know, real, real administrative stuff the way the state of the art might change. You know, a lot of this is, has to do with like it requires paper applications. Well, none of us are really using paper applications anymore. We're using a lot of online, you know, uh, online material to get it. So that's that. And then- I'm, I'm the, talking, Just a comment yeah. about, about that is, um, I think moving, you know, application um, uh, guidelines, uh, requirements um, out of the zoning bylaws makes makes sense. The only problem is um, I think the zoning bylaw should have um, references to to whatever regulations exist so that um, for the developer or, or novice homeowner trying to weave their way through what what they could do and what they couldn't do with their with yeah their it, no it, it garage addition it, it um, will it will Clark and in the draft you know and by the way that these sections that I'm suggesting would move out I might not have captured them all and as we go through right. it and go through the diagnostic we may catch more that can move out uh, right now we're just getting behind the concept of it. But, the, but the regulation yes, as, 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 as I was doing redrafts of the bylaw, yes, everywhere that I could think we were taking something out, a reference to that we moved it, please go see the see regulation, regulation for yeah. so, right. subdivision control law. Uh, right. and, and that brings to the next part, dated, the next step. Whatever. Right, and, so the next step of that is to then create a single source uh, compilation of all of our land use regulations from the various boards. And if I could share this, is my screen sharing now? Am I? Is it is. Is that in addition to the zoning bylaw? We'd have this yeah, so, or in so, the front of the zoning bylaw or a part of it? Well, uh, where it, you know, they're doing a new web page and you know, wh when we when we reorganize, we codify the bylaw, where this will show up, I would suggest it will show up if not if not part of the e360 system which is all bylaws town bylaw you know the general bylaws and the zoning bylaw and the subdivision regs uh, it'll show up somewhere where it's going to be readily accessible to people I have to buy I think the planning board page now and the zoning board page both have links to the bylaw correct right now they do and yes. they, they, yes. they link they link them to the E360 system of organization. Um, we'll, we'll just have right next to that a link to this. Now, the, I'm not wedded to the name. I'm not wedded to, I haven't run by the other land use boards, but I would like to soon and get their input on this. But um, the federal government has something called the CFR, Code of Federal Regulations. The Massachusetts has, um, CMR code of Massachusetts regulations and so this is this would be referred to based on those models as the code of cohesive regulations and if you look at the table of contents and I can I scroll down with this yeah please oh there it is there's my scroll um it would have 
So like our Massachusetts state regulations, um, every Massachusetts state agency has a different section of the CMR and all of their regulations are there, but the CMR as a whole volume is all in one place and you can go to different sections of the different executive offices. This is a similar idea that all the land use boards would have. There are all of the regulations in the same place, so easier for the public to find everything in one spot. Um, and you can see it, it would even include Board of Health, Sewer, Water, and CONCOM. Article cool. one. Article one is the interesting one because in, in all of those things about the filing application, you know, the, how you file the applications, what you submit, what scale of the drawings, blah, blah, blah. Rather than have that separate to each land use board, article one would create a general system for all of them to follow so that we're all getting the same materials on the same scales. And, and the reason I bring this up, it goes back almost 30 years when on CONCOM, we had a particular applicant who gave us one set of plans on CONCOM and then gave the Board of Health for the very same project. It was all about the septic system, completely different set of plans. And in the code of the, code, the Cohasset wetlands regulations, there is a rule that prevents that. And we had a nickname named after the applicant for that rule, but you know, but, the thought being that that should never ever happen. And so, again, this is an idea I gotta run by, we, we have to run by all these other committees, and, and, but I'd like to do that sooner rather than later. I'd like to start showing this to the other committees. But that's the step two of this regulation process is get out of the bylaw what we don't need and then put all of the regulations in one user-friendly spot for all of the land use boards. and. Uh, you know, what they want to include or what they can change, you know, everybody would still have the sole authority over their own regulations. And that's the same way it works under the Code of Massachusetts regulations and the Code of Federal regulations. Each agency controls its section of those regulations and they're the sole agency that, um, that, that uh, makes those changes. If there was something that, um, for example, you'll see down in part C of article six for the zoning regulations, how special permits are applied for is something that both zoning board and planning board deal with. So if we wanted to change a regulation, both boards would have to do it. But on the other things that are exclusive to our respective boards jurisdictions, it would just be the respective boards that would change any of the necessary regulations. So that that's why they're ordered. You know, that right now, this is just in an outline form. There's no substance behind any of this yet, uh, other than those sections that would be moving out, but they're not like moving over verbatim. Though. So that's just the whole concept. So the the working group, working group had come to a consensus on accepting about the idea of moving stuff out and then organizing it in this fashion. And I just would like this committee to endorse that as well, and then start to circulate this regulation outline to the other boards. Well, well, I think the goal to make uh, the regulations more accessible uh, to the general public makes sense. Uh, I'm, di I'm just concerned that um, uh, having a list of regulations that's, that both that is, is already a part of the general bylaws uh, state regulations and the zoning bylaws um, means that there's two places that we have to um, have uh, updated information and, and, and accuracy. For example, under Article 6 that you have up right now, the variance yeah. existing section 12.3 is referenced, but it's, yep. it's actually existing um, section 12.5 for variances. And, and, and here is just an example of, of how um, I, 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 did, I didn't claim to not make typos while I was putting it <laughs> I, know, I know, but I'm just, you, just, I'm just saying when the, the same information exists in two different places, you have the possibility of, of um, but it won't. not being uh, correct in one and, and correct in another, and it, nobody knows it the won't, difference. It won't, but Clark, it won't be in two places. So, so the, the means of how you apply for a variance and what paper and, or on, uh, electronic material you submit is what's getting moved. 
And it'll yeah, be I'm just saying that the reference. It'll be in one is, place, and then back in the bylaw, it will say for application, it'll say C code of regulations. Okay, that's that's good. Um, uh, yeah, it's just it's just the way that the, it's going to be a two step to thing. Number, so yeah. if it's change if it changes in the future, then it's really just changing in one one spot. If it yeah, will. Yeah. And then right. it exists in one spot. I mean, if you're coming through the door, you're going to be looking at the bylaw number one, and then for that particular board you're going to be going to, then you're going to go to the regulations. So, I mean, it's going to be a, it, it, it's always going to be a two step like that, whatever you're filing. But I can attest to what Tom said is that one of the problems that we had in town hall when I was in the concom after Tom was on the concom was that that's exactly what happened was that there was different sets of plans being uh, sent around between the planning board, zoning board, and concom. Uh, the 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 um. Uh, wetland lines were being moved, removed, uh, reset, you name it, on, on different plans throughout the years. So uh, this, get, getting it all in sort of a one-stop shop, I know, you know, things are more sent electronically now than, than years before when you physically had to have eight copies for each people and stuff like that. But nevertheless, uh, there, there was that forum shopping that was going on, and that's something we definitely want to eliminate. Well, well what about a penalty for, you know, uh shifting application content uh, between boards. I mean, because each board has sort of a different thing that they're interested, in, right? Large yeah. home review doesn't get the same thing that the, the ZBA does for, for a special permit because they have different interests and, and priorities in terms of the type of information that they're, that they're looking at. Yeah, it's, it's not but a difference of site plan review or something. It, it, it's where you've had, uh, you know, things, uh, you but know, yeah, if a wetland line is different for Board of Health than it is for uh, CONCOM, then yeah, then I, no, I, I think no. there's it's I'm, I'm just bringing up, <laughs> hey, how about a penalty clause? You know, so that well, well there's that, a, that, a that stick gets into a, that gets into or a, a carrot to get things consistent. Well, oh. when you have engineers and people stamping the plans, it's their license that's on the line. Oh. And so and so you don't necessarily need a penalty other than going after them. But, um, you well, know, the, you know the maybe, one, you maybe know. instead of, you know, de destroying people's ability to, to do the work that they're doing, maybe there may be a penalty. Let's, I'm just bringing it up. Is that, is that a possibility? Well, as you, well, one of the things about the bylaw that we learned on 580 Jerusalem Road is that the zoning board and the planning board do not have an independent fining and punishment authority. We have to rely on the building inspector. CONCOM can, the Board of Health can. We can't. Con CONCOM always we, we, we have generally been the heftiest fines, you know, delivered yeah. Uh, yeah, because they've got can, they've got the authority, but CONCOM as a board can assess them, whereas the planning board and the zoning board can't enforce by themselves. We have to direct the building inspector to do it and then he has to do it. Yeah. Well, well I but, suppose but there, I, there I, are I, other I, forms of, of, of making the point. One would be that if the information between like, again, the CONCOM and the, and the Board of Health on where the wetland line is, is inconsistent that, that uh, the, the submissions for both get um, uh, sent back to the applicant and they have to reapply. That, that, that's not a financial direct financial uh, penalty, but it would be a, a financial penalty for the right. for the applicant. Well, all right. So, for example, under this Article 1 would have the general rules and standards applicable to all boards. I, I, there is text that I've written on this stuff, but I, not this to this particular point, but there, that would be the place that at the end, you know, that you just say, if any board finds that, uh, you know, there have been conflicting filings, you know, something to the effect that all filings, you know, all permitting processes stop until it's corrected. Something like that is what you're saying. And that's where it would, that's a logical place where we could put that in. But there's, again, again, rather than talking on the substances, I'm looking at the concept and trying to just get forward on the concept of doing this. And, and as we get into writing specific regulations. Well, I, I don't think it hurts as a, as a, as a committee to, to to, no, to, talk, no, no. to talk through it. Um, um, and, and I think there, there are um, sort of mistakes that everybody makes on, the, on, their, on their submissions. Uh, and, and then there's malfeasance. And, um, and, and they're different. And, and how do we, 
uh, try and push people towards um, um, making as few coordination errors as, as possible. I mean, as, as an architect, my, my um, requirement under the law is, is the, is the a, a normal um, uh, level of practice, which, which doesn't ex anticipate perfection. I mean, some clients, they would expect perfection. And, yeah, and Clark, any, I'm not worried way. about, I'm not worried about architectural plans as much as I am engineering plans. No, I'm using it as an example. Yeah. I'm just yeah. using it as an example of what the standard is. Um, perfection is one thing, one, one level that some people would expect perhaps. Um, but that's not the, the professional um, or typical yeah. standard of care that is agreed on by the, um, by the courts. Yeah, no, I, I can tell you the one that I'm, I'm thinking about directly was it was malfeasance. It was a wetland line that was taken off. Foundation was put in, came back to us um, when we found out about it with an after the fact, brought them back, had them rip out the foundation from where they had had put it. Um, you know, they were trying to get more of a place and then it became litigation between the, the, the client and the engineer at the time. But they were stamp plans by the engineer. Wetland line was removed on purpose and and that's what what happened um so i'm sure there's more stories about that if we go ask the the cod com and the different boards that there's there's been things in the in the past but i don't have an issue with this the only thing i would say is, is that is that um you know subject to what we get from kp with with looking at you know the substance of the bylaw and things like that that in the future we might rearrange some things uh or what have you but but other than that all right. I don't have an issue with the with with four and five here on the on the docket. All right. Yeah, and I I just wish I was trying to quickly find that I actually written text of Article One, the proposed Article One for these regulations, but I can't find it quickly. But I'll I'll circulate that to you all once I find it. All right. So if I could just uh well I'll make the motion that we reaffirm the concept of moving. Uh, duplicative administrative and application materials out of the bylaw or into regulations. And the second one is that we uh, reaffirm the concept of compiling all land use regulations in one volume. Uh, now that you've made the motion before we vote, is there is there any no, other discussion no. or is there any, uh, or your two motions? Is there is there anyone from the public or anybody who had a comment on this out there? Because unfortunately, I, I can't see if there's anybody else out there. I don't think there's anybody out there at the moment. Okay. Uh, anybody who would be there, I would have admitted. Oh, that's fine. Thank yeah. you. Okay. Uh, I'll second the motions for for four and five. All right. Thank you. Uh, Clark? Yeah. Um, no, no discussion. Well, you well, want to do a roll call? You want to know, you want to deal with other, Do you have another thing to say? Feel free. Uh, no, I mean I think this is what this committee is going to be recommending. Uh, uh, Paul Grady is still here. I don't know if he has any comments about about this. I mean, I've made my comments. I think Paul? between uh, no, I think between the two of you guys, you covered the bases. What? All right, all right. So, all, all, Paul, you're voting in on this one too. All, uh, all in favor of the first motion to the concept of moving stuff out, administrative and application stuff to regulation. Say aye. 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 Second concept of working to move all of the. Uh, Land use board regulations into one volume. All in favor? Aye. 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 It's and unanimous. May I circulate that, begin to circulate that concept to the other boards? Yes, if you change the variance reference to 12.5. <laughs> <laughs> The reference isn't even necessary, but that's okay. All right. Uh, all right. Thank you all then. All right. So now where did the agenda go? 
it, it's just important that you know I actually Thanks. read the stuff that you put together, Tom. Well, I'm glad somebody does. Thank you. Not sure everybody does. I I worried about that in the past, but I don't worry about it with this group. So well, thank you. Well, it happens. Sometimes we have different kinds of attention that we spend on these things. Yes. And I have too much time in the weekend to write this nonsense. So, um, um, all right. Now back to number three. So number six, actually, yeah. No, number three. We we skipped over number three. Oh, okay. Yeah. This this is the actual organization of the bylaw itself. And let me find my screen share on that one. New table of contents. Tom, you've been sending that to me because I haven't gotten it. Lauren sent it out. Uh, uh, Lauren and Cassandra sent that out the other day. I, but uh, you might not have been on the list because they weren't aware that Jack had volunteered you to this committee. So we'll we'll get you all this stuff, but uh, this one I you know and so one of the last things that the working group came to was a consensus on this particular issue, which was how the bylaw would look in its organization of articles, and what you have in front of you is that reorganization, but using our existing bylaw sections and articles so there's not this isn't new for the future this is superimposing our existing bylaw onto this new framework we right now have 22 articles in the zoning bylaw one has been repealed sunset at the senior overlay which i think was 16 and then 20 21 was the marijuana moratorium and that has died by its its life ex, lifespan that was put into the bylaw so we have 20 articles and then within the articles we have multiple sections so the first thought here was consolidating the 20 to 9 and in our current bylaw a lot of things and everything that's article 14 and above had been added on top of the original bylaw over the years. And a lot of them are use related. And so okay. one, of the one of the thoughts of consolidating the articles is to put things that are related such as uses in one place. Again, to help finding things for the public, more user friendliness of the public. So, Woody did a lot of research on different bylaws. This is actually the format of Concord. When I first mentioned this in my first meeting with Judge Cutler and Carolyn, Judge Cutler seemed excited by that because I think she might live in Concord and saw that we were adopting the Concord format. But I will tell you that, she, you know, and again, the, the working group came to a at least the consensus that this was the format we would go forward with and then the substantive changes within each section would happen. And, um, and um, the other day, Judge Cutler sent me an email on, I think Friday or Thursday that said, can you hold off voting on this one because we think it's part of our diagnostic. And I kind of answered that I don't know why this is controversial, but sure, let's discuss it. And I haven't gotten to speak to her or uh, Carolyn Murray about it. So they want us to hold off on approving this concept. I, you know, I guess we have a difference on what diagnostic means. Diagnostic to me means just an assessment of the goods and the bads of our bylaw and what, what could change. But the organizational structure to me and to what the new bylaw fits into seems to be uh, non-controversial and is not dependent on a diagnostic. Um, and, and the prior committee did agree with this, this organizational structure. So there it be. And actually, well, well, if I'm looking, if, if, if as I'm looking, by the way- made, made a courtesy uh, request that we hold off until yeah. it doesn't do any harm to hold off. And, and what you've well, done is other perfectly than, logical because over the last uh, decade and a half, we've just been adding, you know, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, yeah. 21, 22. Oh, 
I don't, um, I don't where think they, they could, and, and they're and it's sort of random and it's and it's it's really just what's the next number is it different um, yeah no and it, that's what this is getting around and i don't think they and I, I think it they don't dispute that concept of what we're doing here but they I, my, my concern is just that um, I, my, my concern is that, you know, the divisions of authority between this committee and the, and the town council on the substance of who's directing this, this, the substantive change of the bylaw. I, I, again, the diagnostic, I expect from them to, to diagnose where our problems are and what changes we could make. I don't expect them to organize it for us and write it for us. But no, that's but me. That's I, do me. Want, I just want to just re repeat that the um, what, what you've put together here makes perfect sense and if other towns are having success in 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 this format um that makes sense and i i know from the use of our bylaw that we've just been tacking things on the end yeah. um but if judge cutler made a courtesy request that we hold off on voting i i don't i don't see why we wouldn't honor the the request i don't is, is there a an urgency to um this this format issue that couldn't wait until we no, get the diagnostic review? No, it's no, it's my my own thought about respecting the work that's been done over the past two years and not reinventing the wheel. But that's fine. We don't have to adopt the concept but tonight. It, but it may be that it, it doesn't change at all after the diagnostic stuff that 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 they just wanted um, us to just hold on this part of it for their look. You know, I did I I didn't hear from them, and they're not here tonight. I thought maybe they would be to to speak to this particular issue, but that's fine. So we'll just put this one off. Uh, as long as it two. does no harm, Tom, um, uh, to put it on hold till the- No, it's third. just, it's it's just I'm conscious of the timeline, even though town meeting in the spring seems very far off, I'm just conscious of the timeline and getting things, uh, you know, interested in getting things out of the way we can get out of the way. That to makes sense because to the give us the meeting, time to work on the substance, you know, the, the train tracks of of um, zoning changes for for town meeting, uh, it comes on an awful fast, and you can't miss a date or else you know right. you have to wait a year or six months or whatever. And by the way, as I look at this, uh, this actually is the version with new stuff, you know, new sections, so because there's one for low impact development, although I think the text of that says reserved for future stuff and climate resiliency says reserved. Right. Um, but- um, Did you get this from, from Concord or did you check Concord? Yeah, I, I, no, I Woody, did. Woody took it on, Woody took it on on the working group to, to survey other towns and their yeah. bylaws. Yeah. And he came up with this one. And this, this apparently is the organization of Concord's Roughly stated, I mean, they have nine articles, maybe they have 10. Um, we started with the 10 and then it was easy, it was obvious to me that it could be brought down further to nine. But again, the concept is, for example, article six, you know, rather than have accessory dwellings, marijuana, all these other things that we've added on separate over sections, years, right. as separate articles, they're now sections of, you, you know, Articles Perfectly. that are related to uses, so that's just the concept of it. But we can wait for the diagnostic. Perfectly to... logical, Tom. I mean, I think it. That's yeah. not the. Yeah. That's not the issue. All right, so we'll pass on that. So now, where is the? Where is the warrant again? The table. No, where is the table of the? Uh, I'm sorry, the agenda. I think we're on to number six. Yeah, I know. I'm trying to find that thing where I put it. While you're looking for it, I I agree with what Clark said. Is that you know if you were in practice, even as a homeowner or attorney or something, whenever you get the cohesive bylaw and things were added to it as as it went along, you would have basically use um, things added on that you know applied to other stuff, but it's tacked on the end, and you know you get this kind of Frankenstein bylaw that you were trying to fish through. So. To, yeah. to definitely yeah. scrub it up and get it get the the extra use ones where they've got to go make, makes a lot more sense and it'll be it'll be easier for the public and everyone to use i think that'll be that'll be yeah easier. and one, one of the other things that you know things have done over the years is this definition all those new articles added their own little sets of definitions so there's yes. definitions all over the place and i do want to just jump back just so you see another conceptual idea about definitions um, which is article two 
It's Article 2 under our current bylaw as well. Um, one of the thoughts about the definitions, again, for the interest of user friendliness, A, bring them all into one spot. Uh, B, get rid of definitions we don't need and adopt the concept of plain and ordinary meaning of some words that the legal system does. Uh, but the other concept here was to divide, the, the, to divide up the definitions into these categories of definitions that again might make it, until you see the substance, see which ones fall into which category, it's hard to look at this, but the concept is, again, to make it user friendly, then rather than going into straight alphabetical order of definitions, yeah. is group them by categories. And then, you know, maybe that'll make it easier to find something, you know, is there a certain type of activity that has a definition on, you know, so. Tom, I, that, did, that, see your, I did see your breakdown version in the, in the draft. Uh, zoning bylaw yeah, for definitions. Yeah. I looked at it uh, exhaustively for one of our earlier meetings, and and I and I guess I'd say um, uh, as as one who tries to access the definition of words in zoning bylaws, having uh, seven or eight different categories of zoning definitions that I might have to look through to find one definition is. Um, you know, you know, and in some cases, they're half a page of definitions. I'm not sure. I mean, unless there's hundreds of definitions, I'm not sure it's a, a user um, All right. as user friendly as just putting them in. We, we, we got right, well, to see. Well, I, I, would, I would wait and see what KP law comes out yeah, because well, we're, we're probably going to get an addition to a lot of our definitions well, that, that aren't there in the bylaw right now. That you think we might have hundreds, thousands, maybe? No, I no, I just, no, not that many. I, honestly, no, I, I think if there are hundreds of definitions, then it, it makes sense to break them down. But if each section has got 10 or 15, I'm not sure I should look at a, you know, aquifer, um, you know, through seven sections for aquifer. All right. Well, I'll, I'll, let me say this about that. The uh, that in the in the, my draft of this, each one of those categories probably has no more than ten or twelve. Right. The bylaw would not have hundreds. I don't think KP will recommend that either, because that just gets unwieldy. And again, you get into you get into unnecessary conflicts if you define a term beyond its plain and ordinary meaning. And the preamble to the definition section states the idea that, you know, generally accepted terms, you know, in a field of endeavor are accepted and plain and ordinary meaning, which the law follows, judges follow that, would be underlying concepts. So you don't have to define every word, but, you know, for example, in the wind by law, they define the pieces of wind turbine. Well. The industry knows what those things are. We don't have to define them. And, and you run the risk that you create a conflict between what is a generally accepted and used term in a particular field because you've done something different. Um, so, well, um, you know, I, I agree with that. Uh, a lot of those, a lot of those definitions, a lot of those definitions in the new articles and the ones in the teens, I would get rid of because I just don't think they're necessary at all. But uh, we, we'll, we'll get to that. I will tell you that because definitions would be part of the reorganization that would be up for town meeting in the spring. You know, we're going to see the KP diagnostic on our current definitions. We're going to see, you know, KP will have the benefit of what I drafted to compare it to. And that, this will be part of their diagnostic. But likely this, you know, later this winter, we're going to get into the meat of this article because the change to article two would be coming for the spring town meeting. So I, you know, save those comments, Clark, because they're but, well taken but, about whether we should just di divert from the just straight alphabetical order. Tom, you, you've got 12 pages of definitions right now and including having them broken out by, uh, by type. Uh, and I just, I don't think there's so many that you can't just leave them in as an alphabetical right. system. All right. Again, yeah, again, when well, we get to the, when we get to the substance. To kick of, it around and see. Okay, uh, no, no, I, I appreciate that. When we get to the substance of article two, we will debate that issue of, of whether we do it or not and just go straight alphabetical. I, I, right. I'm not yeah. wedded to it either way, but I just. And, and again, my point was if, if there were hundreds of definitions that we were trying to 
uh, we ha add a, an additional organizational system to, then I, I think it, it would make sense to, to break them down. Yeah. Well, I, I, I don't think we have. I them. certainly don't expect KP to. I, I, I don't see other bylaws that have hundreds and hundreds, so I don't expect that to be. No, no, that was that, but again, that's the point. We don't right. have hundreds. Right. So well, let's carry on to number six then, because it's on the agenda. All right. All right. So we've, yes, yeah, so we've exhausted that topic for the moment. So let me, where is the agenda? There we are. All right. So the KP diagnostic, I, you know, again, the scheduled discussion will now be October 3, not September 29. Yep. I haven't heard anything. I assume they're on track. I, again, I'm, I will remind them that. You know, again, the schedule, even though Maytown meeting seems a long way off, uh, they, they need to keep, everybody needs to keep on a, a schedule here so that we can start working on the meat of these things uh, right away in our, in our meetings in October. Um, we discussed the first forum's content. Um, tomorrow night, Lauren is presenting that, and I'm just going to be there in the background to the select board. Uh, the thought of our meeting uh, with Chris and Justin and Lauren and I was that the select board okay the format for this meeting since they're taking a very uh, strong interest in the work of this committee. Uh, so that will be presented to them tomorrow night, and hopefully they don't make radical changes to the idea of the format. But, uh, um, we should have, I, su I suppose, for the meeting on the third. I think it's on the that schedule that we would discuss the forum. We will, we will probably have the forum present. The forum presentation materials will probably be ready for that for us to all look at on the third. All right. Last but not least, we have the minutes of the meeting of August twenty second. Is there any discussion, corrections, edits? Nope, having heard none, a motion I, to approve. I, I was just gonna say, as, as we're going through it, when we do the different ones, I, I see it as kind of a, a journey that we're gonna also, you know, hopefully learn from it as we go along, that we're not just the, you know, the people that have been brought on that, that have all the answers, but we're trying to find the answer and be able to do that with the with the public the other town officials and and you know yeah. de development community as well so I, I think the discussion topics are good and i think it'll it'll branch off from there and hopefully we have a good lively discussion on some of these and lauren you're still lauren is uh lauren we did we did decide the other night that lauren is going to like be the lead introduction person for this so lauren actually you're going to be kind of setting the table Mm -hmm. of, the, of the public's expectations of these and what it is we're looking for. Uh, you know, I would want to make clear that this is not a town meeting presentation where here's an article that's done and you either it's yay or nay. It's really a give and take and a forum on ideas. Here are some ideas we're discussing. What do you think? Do you have any other ideas? Uh, that kind of thing. So that's, that's for Lauren to set the table for us for that night. So. I'm sure she's going to do a good job with that. All right. So on the uh, minutes, I have a motion to approve. Uh, I'll make a motion to approve. Um, did these get sent out? I was looking for them and I couldn't find them. I, I my my habit, and I'm going to do it right now. Is while well, I'm, I'm taking notes here on the agenda, and I'm uh, I'm going to do them when this meeting closes, and then I circulate them right away. So. Uh, I hope everybody's getting on my, uh, um, you know, you'll, you'll all get the email tonight. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to quickly put these together tonight. Okay. That's great. Thank you. All right. A second, I made the motion. Uh, second, please. Is this on number seven or number eight? The, no. the minutes. Yes. The minutes. Oh, okay. Eight. Number eight. Yeah. Yeah. I'll second the motion. That's fine. All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Paul Grady. Paul, are you approving the minutes? You can even though I think I here. saw a mild eye. All right. Does anybody else have anything to bring up that was not anticipated within 48 hours? I'd like to discuss. Um, aye. 
<laughs> okay, thank you, Paul. Um, any, anything that anybody else has? I don't have anything new, no. Okay. All right, then uh, thank you for all being here. We'll see you on the third, hopefully with diagnostic in hand. I have zero idea what format it's going to take. I assume it will be some type of multi-page report. So hopefully we'll all have time to read it and discuss it on the third. Uh, I think on the third, we will just be dealing with that and we will be looking at the, uh, the uh, final content for the forum. All right. So Looking forward to it. Motion to adjourn. Second. Aye. 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 Laurie and Cassandra, thank you. Thank you. Thank Good night, you all. everyone. Good night. Thanks. Good night, Good night all. Thank you all. Bye. Bye, everybody.